sometimes life can come so fast with really heavy stuff. It's hard to know what to focus on, when to focus on it, and then to actually focus on everything God is calling us to, releasing everything he isn't. But if we don't, we'll become exhausted and completely ineffective. Hi, I'm Jennifer Slattery, an I Believe writer, and also the host of Life Audio's Faith Over Fear podcast. And I'm learning to trust and rest in God's sovereignty. When my world and my to-do list feels out of control, I remind myself, my God, my Savior, the one who knows me and loves me and guides me, retains full control. Sometimes I forget all of these battles coming my way. They don't ultimately belong to me. I'm but a servant who's instructed to keep her eyes ever on her leader, Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador, one called to represent my Lord. And I'm a soldier commanded to rise above all of the noise so that I can remain completely in tune to God's leading. In Paul's second letter to Timothy, a man pastoring a church during a really challenging and frightening time in history, the apostle wrote, soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. For then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. This is God's call for me as well, to ensure that I am always and only following the Lord of Heaven's armies, as scripture often calls him. Now, this doesn't mean I don't care about what's going on around me. I do. And Paul and Timothy did as well. It means I don't allow all those things to consume me to the point that they begin to drown out, to override or to confuse God's voice. He is my commanding officer and he has a battle plan. He knows precisely how to fight all the evils and the challenges you and I face. He sees things you and I never will. Supportive forces we may never meet or even know about, and all the hidden barriers he and his angelic forces are tearing down. Imagine an army called into combat and given well-planned strategic orders based on intelligence the soldiers weren't privy to. Those soldiers understand the importance of following orders, the lives and the lives of their comrades depend on this. Well, imagine if some of the army, half of the army determined that the orders didn't make sense and they decided to follow their own plan. Such destruction would follow. Now we know human plans, even the most well thought out and well educated, they can be wrong, but God can't. He's never wrong. He never misleads. He never misevaluates or misunderstands. His wisdom is perfect always, which means we can trust him. We must trust him. We must step when he says step, pray when he says pray, wait when he says wait, or when he appears silent, knowing his orders will come precisely at the right time. The stakes are much too high in our hearts, in our relationships, our homes and our faith communities for any of us to go rogue. Many times trust is a choice. For me, it's almost always a choice, especially when I don't feel like trusting. And this past month, there have been so many times I've said to God with tears, I don't like this. I don't understand. This really hurts. And I'm really struggling to see your hand, but I know your heart. And I'm choosing to trust that you are indeed good, that you are loving and true and faithful, even now, even in this. And so I'll wait on you. I don't know what your 2020 looks like. I don't know the challenges you face financially, in your relationships, in your homes, in your faith communities. I don't know what God's calling you to, but I do know peace and strength, victory and effectiveness come through surrendered obedience. We experience supernatural power whenever we yield. 